In this video, I compare the noise performance between the Nikon Z63 and Z8 for RAW video, including a comparison of the Z63 flicker issue I covered in my last video. I set up a high dynamic range scene shot with both cameras configured identically, using the highest native RAW video resolution for each, 8K for the Z8 and 6K for the Z63, both at 30 frames per second and with the normal NRAW quality setting. I used NLOG at ISO 800, which runs the sensor at ISO 100. I drop both clips onto a 1080p timeline in Resolve, which normalizes their output to a common resolution, allowing noise to be compared at the same scale. This is the same type of workflow you'd use to deliver either a 4K or 1080p video from either camera's native RAW resolution. In the video sequences you're about to see, YouTube's compression makes the Z63's noise look worse than reality, and the Z8's noise look slightly better than reality. For this reason, I've also included a side-by-side -side still frame comparison after every sequence, which I found accurately portrays the noise I see from both cameras. Even accounting for YouTube's compression, the video sequences do accurately portray the Z63's flickering issue. Let's get right into it. Here's the full scene from both cameras at their original exposure, rendered as Rec. 709 on the timeline. I metered the window highlights just below clipping. Unfortunately, it was overcast today, so no blue sky to demonstrate how the highlights weren't blown. Here's the shadow area we'll be watching in all our noise comparisons. This is the brightness pushed by one stop. The Z8 is already cleaner here. Here's two stops. I can already start to see the flickering on the Z63 footage. Last minute edit here. After uploading the completed video, I noticed YouTube's compression makes the Z8's footage look like it's flickering on some displays. The source Z8 footage has no flickering in it. I'll demonstrate this later in the video when I show footage from both cameras inside DaVinci Resolve with the waveform scopes. Three stops. The Z63 flickering is now quite distracting. Here's four stops. Five stops. These shadows are pretty much unusable at these levels, at least without noise reduction. Here's the same 5 stop push but with Resolve Spatial Noise Reduction enabled with the threshold set to 24 on both cameras. This threshold level doesn't do much for the Z63's noise and doesn't do anything to reduce its flicker. Here's the same 5 stop push, this time with Resolve's Temporal Noise Reduction, set to the best quality and maximum level. This is rather effective at reducing the flicker on the Z63, which makes sense since Temporal Noise Reduction averages across frames. Keep in mind that since this is a static scene, Temporal Noise Reduction may be disproportionately effective. Rendering times aren't bad, but aren't real time. The Z8 footage with this noise reduction is quite clean. Next I'll demonstrate Resolve's deflicker effect on the Z63's footage. Here's before deflicker is applied. And here's after. Quite effective. Render times are very slow though. Now I'm going to roll through all the same clips you just saw, but played inside Resolve with all four scopes open visualizing the noise. The scopes will provide a more accurate view of the noise differences between the cameras for moving sequences, which can't be conveyed well visually in the moving footage itself due to U2's compression. For noise quantity, look at the width of the lines on the waveforms. The more noise in the footage, the thicker and more frayed those lines will be. This makes sense because noise is the random variation of pixel brightness, and the waveforms reflect that wider range of brightness values as wider lines. You'll see the color component of noise represented in the size of the center on the vector scope. To visualize flicker, watch for the jittering or jumpy lines on all four scopes. Here's the original exposure. We can already see evidence of the Z63's flicker in the slight jitter on all scopes, even though it's not visible in the footage yet. Here's the Z8 at the original exposure, steady on all scopes, indicating no flickering. 
this is the brightness pushed one stop in Resolve. Notice how the waveform lines are already thicker for the Z63's footage versus the Z8, indicating higher relative noise. This is two stops. The Z63's flickering is really showing in the jitter in all scopes and histogram. Still very steady on the Z8. And three stops. And four stops. The flicker jitter is now extreme. Five stops. Here's five stops with spatial noise reduction. No effect on the Z63's flickering. Here's five stops with temporal noise reduction. The flickering is greatly reduced. Here's five stops before deflickering and after deflickering. Here's one final scope comparison, this time for black frame video, which means the body cap on with no lens, so that we can completely isolate the noise difference with no signal. This was for 4K NRAW on both cameras, with the brightness pushed 5 stops and resolve. In this last segment, I'm going to share some analytical work I've done of the RAW video from both cameras, specifically for the flicker issue. I shot a 10 second NRAW N-Log ISO 800 clip at each camera's maximum resolution with the body cap on, so again, no signal, only noise. I dropped both clips into a 1080 Rec 709 timeline with the RAW brightness increase 5 stops and resolve. I then exported the individual frames of those clips as 16-bit TIFFs, which totaled 600 frames each since it's a 10 second clip of 60 frame per second video. I wrote MATLAB code to generate the average luminance and noise standard deviation of each TIFF, importing those results into Excel and graphed using a scatter chart. Each dot on the chart represents a single frame, with the horizontal axis being time, the left representing the frames from the start of the video, and the right representing frames at the end. The vertical axis is the deviation of that frame's average brightness from the average brightness of all frames, represented as a percentage, with a positive percentage meaning the frame was brighter than average, and a negative percentage being darker. Dots near the center are frames whose average brightness match the average brightness of all frames, which is ideally what we want to see. Notice how the plot is rather scattered for the Z63, with brightness outliers as large as 6-8% in each direction, which means a worst case outlier approaching 15% for a swing from a very bright to a very dark outlier. Also note how there's no visible change to the random distribution across the 10 seconds of video. Here's the same plot for the Z8 raw frames. This was very surprising. First, notice how tightly clustered the plots are for adjacent frames, moving from left to right. That means there's very little difference in the average luminance between frames, which is good and why there's no visible flicker on the Z8. But also notice how there's three distinct groupings of luminance values across the 10 second clip, with each group demonstrating a very gradual luminance drift that starts low, then gets increasingly brighter over the three or so seconds in each group. The luminance then resets back low at the start of the next group. This drift is too slow to be noticeable in actual video. Still, it's quite interesting from a sensor analysis point of view. To my eyes, the drift within each of the three groups may be the result of thermal noise on the sensor and the drop between groups representing some type of real-time sensor recalibration of the reset levels to account for that thermal noise. This is entirely speculation on my part, and it probably doesn't have any relevance to the image quality, but it's interesting nonetheless.